which is the last session for the day. Uh, it is the next debate, which is, I'm sorry, let me share my screen. Uh, the moderator for this debate is Dr. Anna Bhattacharji, sir. And uh, I welcome you, sir, to the session, and I'm handing over the session to you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Yashashi. Uh, may I have the CV slides of the uh, debaters, please? So we all know that uh, type 2 diabetes now uh, comprises of more than 90% of all patients of diabetes. And uh, on one hand, the prevalence of diabetes is increasing day by day. On the other hand, we are getting newer and newer anti-diabetic agents for the therapy of uh, this type 2 diabetes. And uh, the evidences are also building up with many extra glycemic benefits. And some authorities now even recommend that non-insulin agents as a first line injectable agent in uh, a patient with type 2 diabetes. So uh, with this background, I think the future of insulin in type 2 diabetes will have two excellent debaters uh, with us who are uh, known to uh, all of you. But still, uh, for this last session, I will uh, introduce them uh, very, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Yashi, can you uh, just share sir, the... Just, uh, just a second, sir. I'll... Yeah, of yeah. course. So uh, the topic for today is whether insulin will retain same relevance in management of type 2 diabetes in future. And uh, for the motion, we have Dr. Karthik Balachandran, who is a DM endocrinology and assistant professor attached to the Ramchandra Medical, Sri Ramchandra Medical College, Chennai, who has a lot of uh, publications uh, to his name. And our next speaker is Dr. Om Lakhani, so he's another, you know, uh, excellent debater again. Uh, very much. Uh, he's a cons he's also a consultant endocrinologist, uh, DNB endocrinology, and So uh, he's currently uh, attached to the uh, Zydus Hospital at Ahmedabad. And he also has several publications to his name. And he is very fond of the newer modes of, or newer techniques in the management of diabetes. So again, uh, we uh, are expecting a very exciting uh, debate session. And both of you have uh, two mini uh, 12 minutes uh, for the debate itself. And then we will have another two minutes for rebuttal and sar rebuttal. So uh, to begin with, I'll hand over to Dr. Balachandran for uh, his part of the debate, his part of his, his argument in favor of the motion. Dr. Balachandran, please. Yeah, uh, thank you uh, very much, sir. Uh, at the outset, I'd like to thank the Diabetes Association of India West Bengal for this opportunity and uh, especially Sujay Ghosh sir for this uh, opportunity. It's always a pleasure to uh, debate O. And uh, today's topic, I'll be talking that insulin is relevant today and it will always be. So we are concerned about the future here and about relevance and what is relevant and what is future is sort of subjective and I'll leave that to your own imagination. From my perspective, relevance is something that is always going to be useful to patients and future is something that we can see, you know, maybe 10 years or maybe 15 years at the maximum. So that's what I think. And before we go into the presentation per se, we are not going to talk about uh, situations where insulin is the only viable choice such as type 1 diabetes, pregnancy or emergencies. Why in type 2 diabetes would insulin be relevant in the future is the motion. And for that, I give you four important reasons. Number one is the numerical reason. Number two is biological. Number three, and least talked about the economic reason. And number four, the evolutionary reason. Let's start with the 
numbers numbers count in any situation and this time it's no different a beautiful map of our country from 1990 to 2016 just under one generation the prevalence of diabetes has gone up significantly so we have a huge number of people with diabetes not only that we also have increasing life expectancy not just in the richer southern states but all over the country so what we have is a huge pool of diabetes patients who are getting older who are having complications of diabetes and what do they find out they find out that biology is the boss the number two reason and what do i mean by biology is the boss this is how a diabetes story goes by and large so first we start with metformin then certain other stuff is added it could be tablets it could be injections and so on and finally the patient agrees to insulin therapy so this is how it goes on sometimes upfront combination therapy can be used it's an upcoming modality but however this is how diabetes story usually unfolds in most of our patients now as you can see from the story itself all loads lead to low and all diabetes ultimately leads to insulin insulin is irreplaceable it can be given to any patient in any condition in any comorbid situation and so on so ultimately the biological reality is that all patients should require insulin and it is the end game of therapy you could give some secretagogue uh, to stimulate insulin just like you know just nudging the ball with the stick here or you could directly put the ball into the hole like uh, sglt2 inhibitor one way or the other the only reason how uh, all other therapies will work is if you have a pancreas and if you need pancreas you need insulin that's it so that's the biological reality even if we discount the biological reality we have to face this third reality called money it's not often talked about because it's not considered polite but that's just the way things move so the average budget for a patient in india is widely varying because this country is large and diverse and what is applicable in kerala is probably not applicable in assam and so on but this is an approximate number of 3000 they found in many articles so this is how much a patient spends per month on diabetes this includes consultations labs tests injections and so on and so forth so you can see that money is a very important part of treatment in india and one of the common uh, reference against insulin is that does it really protect the heart now before answering this question we all know that hyperglycemia itself can harm the heart and of course insulin relieves the hyperglycemia but before that we need to understand that there's something in front of the heart and that something is your pocket so the road to the heart basically goes through the pocket it's all nice and dandy to say that some drug protects your heart but if i am not able to afford the drug today here then obviously that drug is not going to be of any use to me so this is demonstrated very convincingly in a number of guidelines that we have seen this is just a ada guideline we have all seen this thing ad nauseum what is important is that there is a vast difference between what the experts say you should do and what actually happens in reality this is from a rich western country the uk the compliance with the guideline and you can see that glp1 receptor agonists are no longer they don't even figure in the whole scheme of things the usage is so less that they don't even figure in the scheme of things the only uh, injectable that even shows up is insulin no other thing just shows up that is because the guidelines and reality are conflicting on the use of uh, drugs and it has something to do with money and while we may want to do what is on the left the rod of asclepius to be good then do good to the patient you also have to look at what is on the right and if you look at these two images you will find that they look very similar but they are not really the same so money cannot be just wished away and insulin fits all pockets the fancy pocket the not so fancy pocket and so on so if these three reasons are not enough we can see that change is the only concept the evolutionary reason while other drugs evolve as uh, others have pointed out other drugs evolve over a period of time newer drugs keep getting added insulins don't remain static 
which is not just a molecule of life but a living molecule and a living molecule changes becomes better over a period of time so what kinds of evolution happens insulins go from a clock time molecule to a calendar time molecule in uh, previous days you might say that insulin oh it's 9 o'clock it's time for my insulin perhaps in the future with icodec people may say hey it's sunday it's my time for insulin it can be given through the nose on a pump and so on insulin basically evolves just like any other medicine and all of these evolutions give convenience at the same time they do not um, compromise on control so the holy grail of convenience and control is being achieved by the evolution of insulin not only that several insulin avatars are uh, up in the horizon some of them are liver selective insulin some of them are oral insulin the so called peptide in a pill and there are even smart insulin or glucose responsive insulin of course none of them are in day to day use as of now but we must remember that we are talking about the future and the future can hold anything and what is now and here is that we can we have seen that the flatter insulin gets flatter and flatter the faster insulin get faster and faster ironing out some of the kinks that were originally present in the insulin so to summarize there are numerical reasons biological economic and evolutionary reasons why insulin will continue to remain relevant in patients with type 2 diabetes and uh, if insulin were mark twain it would say that reports of my death have been greatly exaggerated so insulin will always continue to be but in only one circumstance i can think of insulin losing its relevance and that is when the hell freezes over the seas dry up or the stars drop from the sky thank you so much for listening and over to the organizers Uh, sir can you kindly unmute yourself oh, oh yeah sorry uh, excellent deliberation kartik thank you so much so we'll move over to om for the counter argument regarding the future of insulin type 2 diabetes uh let's share my slide yeah are my slides visible uh not yet it's a blank screen Uh, yeah. Is it visible now? No, yeah, it's fine. Thank you. It's so, uh, you know, uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you to the organizers for having me. Uh, and thank you, sir, for the kind introduction. Uh, and thank you for, to Karthik for sparing three minutes because I'll use that three minutes extra. So, uh, you know, just to put things into perspective for you, uh, this is 100 years of insulin, right? Uh, we are having a session on 100 years of insulin. Uh, for the last almost one and a half to two hours, you have been listening to all the virtues about insulin. Uh, if you see the list of the speakers, right? And if you see, you're, you're the biggest names in endocrinology field talking before me. I'm the last speaker of the day. And also, you know, to put into perspective, the junior most person in the entire list of speakers also. So I'm basically trying to gain sympathy from you. Uh, and most importantly, I am debating the most fiercest debater in the endocrinology sphere. So, you know, uh, spare me a few things, right? So when I'm punching about my weight, you know, the best thing actually to do is to change the game altogether, right? So that's what I'm going to do. And, you know, at end of this, I, I there'll be a lot of people who will be angry with me, but, you know, uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy this. And I think this might be something, you know, which uh, will be something different. Okay. So warning, right? Insulin is relevant. This is, I, I you saw this slide somewhere, right? Yeah. So, and always will be, this is what Karthik said, and I agree, right? I don't disagree to that. In fact, I personally believe insulin is relevant, will continue to be relevant both in type 1 as well as type 2 diabetes. But the question here is not what I believe, but what the world believes, and that is what is more important, right? At the end of the day, I am not my patient, right? My patient is somewhere, somebody else, and it's him who has to take insulin, not me. So I think that is ultimately you know, what my argument is going to be. And my argument, let me warn you, is going to offend some people. So don't take it personally, right? Uh, but, you know, take it with a, a little bit of pinch of a salt or maybe, uh, you know, a, a unit of insulin. Perhaps. Okay. So, uh, you know, what I'll not do, I'll not talk about newer oral antidiabetics in pipeline. They'll be there. They will not replace insulin. Neither will injectable ones like GLP-1. 
insulin will remain insulin i'll not talk about oral insulins it is unlikely to be a reality soon i will not talk about smart insulins other innovative technology i think you had a great talk by dr bansali sir i think you know uh, you can refer back to the talk i'll not going to talk about that i can never you know uh, uh, do better than what sir has done so you know we'll not talk about that what we'll basically talk about and my basic outline of the entire argument is going to be this that we we are the people the doctors right we are the people who will make insulin irrelevant in fact the argument is is it even relevant today that's the basic argument right that's my argument and you know uh, that's i'm going to that's that's the point that i'm going to defend right so this is the argument for the next generation of endocrinologists the the cream i laid out the best of the best in our country does not find insulin relevant today i'll give you an evidence for that uh, again you know uh, i removed the names but people who have posted this know what they posted and you know uh, please spare me right uh, for that i'll give my email address at the end so you can send me uh, whatever brickbats you want so but this is uh, at a post from a whatsapp group of young endocrinologists and this debate was initiated by karthik not by me i just you know put my leg out uh, and you know i asked a question and there's one young endocrinologist who said i'll prefer sulfonylurea over insulin okay not my words this is an endocrinologist okay another one in india right i'm just reading it out this is young endocrinologist in india most people who come to you for the first time detected to have diabetes have hbo1c of 11 and 12 no one wants insulin here you have to give low dose of fcu which you may later withdraw right so to answer that i said hbo1c 11 to 12 you must give insulin our job is to give the right advice and there is another one who says they respond beautifully to fcu with metformin with dp4 diet and exercise so you know i agree with this and this is what i will do now karthik knows this right he knows this he know who, who these people are so i think it's been me and karthik but you know this is the young endocrinologist who was speaking these are not you know uh, uh, homeopaths or ayurvedas these are endocrinologists okay so uh, and and the younger ones you know uh, who are the future right okay second argument the current generation so this is the future generation the current generation also doesn't find insulin relevant okay the current practicing uh, uh, endocrinologist diabetologist i'll tell you why again with evidence so this is a study from dr unikrishnan et al right the very famous icmr indian diab study from this study some questions what percentage of patient in this study had hpa1c in the target range of less than 7 only 30% 70% did not have hpa1c in target range what percentage of type 2 diabetes patients remember 70% were not under target how many of them were on insulin 3% on insulin alone insulin with oad 8% total 11% out of 100% only 11% patients were on insulin right this is the current reality okay so 30% of patients were having uncontrolled diabetes but only 11% were patients of uh, were on insulin so kartik can say that you know insulin will be you know will lose its relevant uh, only when the cows come home or whatever you know uh, he may say that but what he cannot deny this fact right this is the reality which we face right okay moving ahead this is another study from dr moses et al published in indian journal of endocrinology and metabolism right what was the mean duration of diabetes before starting insulin 7 years right so you have to wait patient had to wait for 7 years before he was initiated on insulin fair enough i'll i'll give it up, right but then what percentage of patients agree to take insulin in the first counseling only 10 to 25% not my words study okay we'll now give you my own data so in our so i just did a quick analysis of our data what was the mean percentage of hpnc very referred to a specialist for diabetes benefit at our center we are a quaternary Uh, you know center where there is no dearth of money or anything you know that we don't talk about those things yet the mean hpa1c is 9.8% before they refer to an specialist right first and then what is the mean hpa1c for insulin initiating insulin in these patients with type 2 it is 10.1% it is even worse than the national average right so for years together this is the conclusion for years together patients with type 2 diabetes are on treatment they have not been on target they have not been referred and they have not been initiated on insulin right where is the relevance I mean, there is no use of insulin why, why are we talking even talking about relevance okay third point we might be influenced by a lot of things but our patients are influenced by even more things right so what typically influences our patients you know a lot of externalities what influences us what our patients wants right so i'll give you three case scenarios real life 
patient with HbA1c 11 on three oral antidiabetics. Doctor said you need to be started on insulin. Patient said I don't want insulin. I will change the doctor. The doctor says okay. Here is another oral antidiabetic. Familiar, right? Scenario two. HbA1c of 11 on three oral antidiabetics. Patient, I have eaten too many mangoes this summer. Otherwise, my diabetes has always been under control. Don't prescribe insulin. Insulin, I will come next time with better control. Doctor says fine. He has another pill. Scenario three. Patients with HbA1c 11 on three oral antidiabetics. I was prescribed insulin by another doctor. I have come for a second opinion. Doctor says wait, wait. He has your another pill, right? This is the reality. And tell me, Karthik, can you deny this? I don't think so. right because you yourself said I, this slide i saw this somewhere right from dr karthik's presentation that money trumps over you know times or medicine right and this holds true for patients but also for doctors too remember they have to you know also uh, run their show right you know if the patient keeps moving to other doctors you know what will the doctor do and then our patients and then they are you know in turn influenced by external factors so this is you know uh, we had this video I, i don't think we'll be able to hear the sound but this is uh, mr rajiv dikshit uh, unfortunately is not there anymore uh, he has 1.3 million subscribers on an unofficial channel he's an unofficial channel which is 1.3 million subscribers and in this video if you can go to youtube you can listen to this he very categorically says that i will tell you how to manage diabetes but the first thing is don't take insulin and then he gives 10 minutes lecture on why you should not take insulin now he's not a doctor but he has 1.3 million followers on an unofficial channel right uh, and of course you know you always know this guy right so i mean karthik may not agree insulin is irrelevant and i may not agree but baba agrees that insulin is irrelevant and then baba completely agrees with this point right there is no doubt about it and you know what baba says get baba gets that's a reality right so we think patients are not influenced by all this right you will be naive to think in india people are not influenced by these things they are right and of course even going beyond it right now now let's see the reality right point number 5 there is a pioneer company which which is you know embedded with insulin you know that's all they do they it's a big pharma company which makes insulin therapy what does what does this company think right they are the pioneers of insulin right so a leading pharma company a pioneer of insulin prefers to launch an oral glp1 analog in preference to their own injectable glp1 analog why right tell me why because they know that india in india injectable therapies don't work they know this right and if again you know it's an undeniable fact right you have this you know right in front of you they're very very gung ho about this new oral drug uh, which was perhaps an injectable one but they didn't launch the injectable one in india they skipped it conveniently right finally even if you initiate insulin do we give it with conviction right so you know see this study again from moses uh, et al right the difference in mean daily dose of insulin in initiation versus at 26 weeks was 0.8 units just 0.8 units compared to uh, you know suggesting a lack of optimization so we do start insulin but even if we do do it give it with conviction answer is no right so and of course you know you know the guidelines you know uh, ad nauseum as karthik said uh you know this you seen this and of course you know uh guidelines are continuously sidelining insulin they consider glp1 receptor this is you know adss consider glp1 receptor agonist in most patients prior to insulin right you know trying to make it irrelevant and again you know uh, east guideline again similar right uh finally let me hit the nail in the coffin uh, we're discussing type 2 but let me put take you back to type 1 where you know everybody in this you know uh, session will agree that there is no alternative it's insulin right but are the current insulins the best therapy ever even for type 1 diabetes answer is no because you know this is something which uh, and all of you i mean honest put your you know uh, hand on your heart and tell me no patient with type 1 de develops a perfect normal glycemia they don't despite having better faster and flatter insulins right you still you don't develop normal glycemia right i think you know somewhere somebody is really going to you know uh, solve the problem of the uh, you know uh, the stem cell or the uh, uh, you know the other therapies uh, you know islet transplants and all that right and they'll perhaps make insulin irrelevant to sometime even in type 1 right so ultimately in summary first forget the future insulin is hardly even relevant today that's the reality i think that is what we have to face right and i hope 
at the end of two hours of this lecture, this is not the reality, right? Things I hope things change. Hope there is more initiation of insulin. Hope there is more timely, uh, you know, treatment with insulin. But this is the reality today, right? Second, a standard last choice therapy for all patients. This is a last choice therapy. Used more, it is used more as a threat than ex its actual use, right? This is the re real, real relevance of insulin, right? Insulin continue to scare people. Influencers continue to scare people about insulin, right? Uh, you know, every Baba you take, no Baba likes insulin, right? That's, that's, you know, one statement I'll give you, right? And patients, of course, don't want to take insulin. We don't want to give them insulin, right? And even if we want to give them, we don't want to titrate. So this is a challenging scenario, right? Make insulin. So, you know, in words of Donald Trump, make insulin is relevant again so that we can retain its relevance in the future, right? And finally, you know, this will be actual relevance in insulin. So as you know, Gabbar said, you know, there's always a threat. Soja vana Gabbar aajayega, right? What you have seen is, take your pills or else insulin aajayega. That's the relevance of insulin in today's world, right? So that's my argument. And like I said, you know, if you have uh, brick bats, don't put it up here. You can mail me silently, right? And I'll, I'll, I'll you know, uh, try to defend it there. Uh, but, you know, thank you for listening. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Om, for an excellent and unconventional uh, kind of argument against the motion. So, uh, we'll back to Karthik for your rebuttal. Two minutes time, Karthik. Over to you. Yeah, uh, as usual, I uh, enjoyed Om's uh, debate. So, again, it all boils down to what we understand and mean by relevance. Insulin may not be the favorite choice. Insulin may not be the choice we want or the patients want, but you know it, it is the ultimate reality. As uh, his final slide said, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, we all have to worship at the altar of insulin. We have to make insulin, uh, you know, relevant again and uh, useful again. But again, uh, what the people want and what the uh, babas want and what uh, you know, Ayurveda or other things want don't really matter. What matters is the truth, and that truth is uh, it's possibly incontestable that insulin will continue to be used and continue to be. There are uh, patients who need insulin, but they don't get insulin, possibly because uh, our communication towards that is not up to the mark, and we ourselves. Thing we lost communication to Kartik. Kartik, you are not audible right now. We have a few more seconds. Uh, I think he got disconnected. So in the meanwhile, uh, back to Om again for your sorry battle. So I think, you know, uh, uh, sorry, I think Kartik couldn't complete his rebuttal, but yeah. my point being that, you know, uh, we uh, continue to use insulin in a very negative form, right? I completely agree that it is perhaps the most uh, relevant treatment for type 2 diabetes, of course, for type 1 and also for type 2 diabetes. It continues to retain its relevance even in, after 100 years, which is the testimony of its success. But I think, you know, we need to, you know, use it uh, in a more timely manner. Across the country, we need to kind of, you know, use it in a more empowering way rather than in a way as a threat or as, as you know, uh, trying to dissuade people from, uh, you know, using insulin. I think uh, the reality today is that, you know, the only way we can, the only, you know, the best weapon that we have for fighting type 2 diabetes and the tsunami of complications that are going to follow is actually insulin. Uh, you know, you might have you, you might have another seven or eight oral antidiabetics coming very soon in the market, but none of them will replace insulin. So I think insulin, I completely agree. That's why I said, you know, I, I, I don't want to debate this. The point is, I completely agree that insulin is relevant and continue to be relevant, but I think we need to make it relevant. You know, it is our duty. It is our job. I think the patients will ultimately follow what we tell them, right? And, you know, at the end of the day, I think we need to be more convinced. I think we are. At least these people are, but I think in a broader sense, 
uh, more people in general really need to be convinced about insulin, really need to understand the insulin and we need to really help them do that. And that's, that's the thing we need to fight. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Karthik. And uh, thank you, Om, uh, for Karthik's uh, very logical and cool way of uh, uh, defending the motion and a uh, very offbeat way of, uh, I mean, uh, of countering it by Om. We enjoyed it a lot. Uh, thank you, uh, both of you. Unfortunately, we lost Karthik for the last few seconds for his sorry but for yeah, uh, his there's rebuttal. a pocket in my uh, yeah place. yeah 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 we know <laughs> okay. uh, but anyway we really enjoyed it so thank you uh, both of you uh, this was the last uh, session for on the behalf of organizers i really thank you and all the audience over here and back to uh, yashashi for the further proceedings thank you thank you sir and uh, it was a very interesting experience.